friends. How many of us have them? Well, you need at least one to be able to play the plethora of co-op games that are set to release this year. Unless, of course, you're one of those people that play co-op games with perfect strangers. Not judging though, let's get started. On number 10 we have Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland. The third game in the Division Universe Heartland is a standalone spin-off that takes the player away from the big cities and into the fictional rural city of Silver Creek. The Division Heartland features two game modes. Storm Operations is a 45 player mode, where you fight against other players in an enemy faction known as the Vultures, all while trying to survive a little virus. Excursion Operations, however, is the mode where you can side with your buddy to complete missions and loot gear, while trying not to succumb to the said virus. Heartland will feature a lot of survival elements, like for example, trying to manage your hydration levels and stuff like that. Other features include smarter AI, contamination zones replacing the dark zones, a day cycle, which at this point is kind of given for big games. The character classes that will be available at launch, or at least are known right now to be available, are weapons expert, medic, and survivalist. And last but not least, Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland will be free to play, which sounds like the perfect setup for amazing amount of microtransactions. I mean, we'll see, but at the end of the day, it's Ubisoft, so you know how this goes. The game will launch on Windows, all the Xboxes, and all the Playstations. Next up is Cohen Bones, and if you don't follow game news super close, you might be thinking that this game already released like last year or something. But no, it's still not out. Although Ubisoft announced a release date, 16 of February, so you know, fingers crossed. Skull and Bones put you into the so-called driving seat of a pirate ship in an open world open water, where you can go wherever you want and plunder whatever you want. Buy new ships, customize them, arm them with the latest in the pirate technology, fight other pirates and sail the Indian Ocean. As for the co-op play, Skull and Bones will have a multiplayer mode where you and up to 5 players can challenge another player's crew to uh, treasure hunt. If you've played Assassin's Creed Black Flag, you probably already know how the wholesaling and what the general feel of the game will be like. After so many delays, most of which, you know, very last minute, I'm still not super sure that uh, the game will release on the set date. I mean, the game should have been released like in 2018, that's six years ago. Six years. Still though, I'm pretty excited about this one, so let's see how things go. Skull and Bone should release on PC, Xbox Series, PlayStation 5 and Amazon Luna. On the A spot we have Earth Defense Force 6. The year is 2027, only 10% of the world's population remains. Despair is in the air, everywhere you look around. Despair is in the air, every sight and every sound. You get the idea. Hey, giant ants. The sixth main game in the series is expected to be released in the spring of this year for Europe and the States. I specified this because the game was already released in Japan two years ago. A direct sequel to Earth Defense Force 5, the sixth game once again puts you in the role of an EDF soldier battling giant insects intent on taking over Earth. By insects I mean giant ants, wasps, bees and lesser known creepy crawlies like a dragon or octopi. If you're wondering how are these graphics not from 2015, that's the thing with these games. They feature a bit of outdated graphics, a not at all serious story, quick, over the top gameplay and presumably a lot of casual fun. Yes, the EDF games are fun and they have quite the cult following. So grab a friend or three and jetpack missile shoot your way through hordes of giant ants. Earth Defense Force 6 will be released on PC and PlayStation somewhere in the spring, presumably. Next up we have Blight Survival, a different take on the zombie survival genre where you and up to three friends can team up as knights in a war-torn medieval land plagued by the Blight, a disease that turns people into a frenzied medieval zombies. I mean look at it, the game just looks amazing, It's the atmosphere is dark, very gritty and you know, dirty, desperate. Described as a combination of roguelite and extraction, Blight Survival incorporates the best of both worlds. Action-packed battles, stealth elements, a wide range of weapons, talents, armor, equipment, and of course, greed. We will extract or keep pushing, because you know, the good stuff is just a couple of feet away down the road, so I don't know, 
I don't know. New ideas in genre are always welcome, but mixing For Honor and what looks like Resident Evil 4 into a extraction roguelite? I mean, who thought of that? And it looks like a no-brainer after you see the trailer. Blight Survival is one of the games on this list that I'm super excited for, but there is still no exact release date. So if you are looking forward to playing this one too, we'll have to wait some more, or a lot more. Blight Survival will release on PC. Expected to release this year is also Contra, Operation Galuga, a reimagining of the original Contra game. 80s running gun action in its finest, but with updated graphics and sound, new foes, new bosses, new game modes and updated weapon system. I mean, new weapons simply, you know, flying over your head periodically was a good enough weapon system to me. Well, I'm old and Contra was actually the first game that I actually finished on the NES, the first, that's the first Contra. So the series had a special place in my heart and I can't help but feel excited about this one. In addition to the upgrades I already mentioned, there will be multiple playable characters with different instinctive abilities, stackable weapon upgrades and multiple difficulties. Presumably with I just want to experience the story difficulty level, you know, for all the people that want to explore the rich and interesting intricate story of the first country game. Jokes aside though, this is a lot of content so I hope it will add to the replayability of the game because let's be honest the first country game was not a long game even compared to other NES titles. You will be able to dive in the jungles and waterfalls of Contra with one friend in story mode and up to three friends in arcade mode sometime this year on PC, Switch, all the Xboxes and all the Playstations. Next, we have The First Descendant. Initially revealed at the Game Awards 2023, The First Descendant is a free-to-play third-person looter shooter developed by Nexon Games. The player takes the role of a descendant, a super soldier fighting in the war against aliens. As the looter shooter part commands, you will have a wide variety of weapons and equipment at your disposal. The game had over 2 million players participating in the beta, which sounds great, and is built on Unreal Engine 5, which looks great. However, the devs of the first Descendant, Nexon Games, are mostly known for creating mobile games that are microtransactions heavy, very pay to win, etc. Stuff like that. And let's be honest, the free to play looter shooters are a suitable genre if you want to go crazy on the microtransactions. Also, it is not uncommon for the games of this genre to release unfinished or closed servers like soon after a release. I mean, Anthem is the shining example in this case, but you also have recent live service games that failed pretty fast. Suicide Squad kills the Justice League more recently, another example. A game like this needs a lot of work power to get off the ground. A good community management, customer service, a well thought world map with ongoing updates. It just takes a lot of commitment from the creators. And then we have Nexon, which have been known for dropping support and service on some of their games. You know what I mean? All I'm saying is I won't be surprised if the game releases full of bugs and going straight at your money. But anyways, we're here for the call. The first descendant can be played with up to three friends or good acquaintances with whom you can take on giant bosses in special co-op missions. The game releases on PC, the Xboxes and the Playstations. On number 4 we have Brothers A Tale of Two Sons Remake, a visual upgrade of the critically acclaimed 2013 fantasy adventure game about two brothers set on a journey to find the cure for their ill father. The remake adds fully rebuilt characters and landscapes, updated graphics gameplay and performance orchestral soundtrack, but also keeping the same emotional impact that will break you down like a stick. Not much information is available on what the gameplay changes will be. I'm guessing that 90-95% of the changes will be graphics and frames per second. Other than that, I can't really think of anything that needs to be altered around how the game is played. However, we won't have to wonder about it too much as the game releases at the end of February. You and a friend will be able to play or replay this epic adventure of the Brothers on PC, PS5 and Xbox Series S and X.
Another co-op game set to release in 2024 is Little Nightmares 3. A standalone sequel to the previous two games, Little Nightmares 3 is developed by a different studio. Although the original developer Darcy Studios got acquired by another company, the intellectual rights for the game remained a property of Bandai Namco, who decided to move on and hand the development of the game to none other than Supermassive Games. If you don't know, Supermassive Games are the studio that stands behind games like The Quarry, Until Dawn, and Dark Pictures Anthology games, so you know a quality studio overall. Little Nightmares is a horror adventure puzzle series where the player takes control of a child making its way through a dark world filled with grotesque inhabitants. Little Nightmares 3 keeps the original gloomy and desperate atmosphere of the series while introducing two completely new protagonists, Low and Alone. Low is a boy with a bow and Alone is a girl with a wrench. Their equipment will help them go through obstacles, solve puzzles and battle enemies. As you've probably figured out by now, you and one of your friends will be able to take the roles of low and alone. However, the game can also be played solo with the AI taking control of the other kit, but we're not here to talk about that, right? As I mentioned, each of the protagonists is equipped with different tools slash web. One can be useful in one situation, the other in another, and some situations will call for combined brain power. As its predecessors, a big chunk of the game is platforming and sneaking, so if you've never played any of the previous games, you know, don't expect a full-on action game here. Little Nightmares 3 doesn't have a release date as of this moment, all we know is it is coming out sometime this year for PC, Switch, all the Playstations and all the Xboxes. On number 2 we have No Rest for the Wicked an isometric action RPG from Moon Studios, the award-winning developers of Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Not much is known about the game, but it has already been dubbed the best RPG of 2024. And it might be early for such claims, but I can definitely see where these are coming from. The game just looks magnificent. If you've played any of the Ori games, you know that Moon Studios create one of the most graphically impressive levels and backgrounds in the industry, and painted detailed live and it seems no rest for the wicked will stay in the same graphics lane, the vibrant colors, the lightning, everything. The story promises to be dark and mature revolving around a politically torn kingdom swept by an unholy plague. You play as a holy warrior who kind of sees an opportunity amongst all this to prove his devotion. The combat is satisfyingly gory and will be precision based, more of the dark soldier type with each weapon having its own moveset. Runes, armor crafting, different builds, the system that usually comes with every modern RPG will be available here also. One interesting thing, the player will be able to buy property in the kingdom and go crazy on customizing it and decorating it with flower pots and you know rugs, a welcome rug, who knows. On the cooperative side though, the player will be able to play throughout the whole story with up to three friends, so no additional separate from the story co-op mode. You and your buddies can play through the whole game together which is always a good thing. Moon Studios developed this game for over 6 years now, calling it their favorite project, so it is hard to not be excited for this one. No Rest for the Wicked will be available this year for PC, Xbox Series and PS5. And of course, at number 1, it's Path of Exile 2. Another free-to-play game, but this time we mostly know what to expect. Path of Exile 2 is set years after the first game and get this, was initially conceived as a standalone expansion, branching from the main story and eventually sharing the same endgame, but grew out of this idea into a game of its own, which, you know, Thank you. From what we know so far, there will be 6 new acts, over 100 bosses, over 600 monsters, 100 distinct environments, 36 ascendancy classes, 1500 passive skills, 240 active skills, 700 equipment types, 200 support gems, 12 character classes. In what world this much content is considered an expansion? Also, the graphics and the gameplay will be improved and check this out, there will be a dodge roll. Take my money. 
and give them back because as I said it's free to play. The story picks it up at Rayclast where corruption starts spreading again and after you deal with it you'll gain access to more than 100 endgame maps each with a different boss at the end. As for the skills, the passive skill tree is bumped up to 1500 passive skills and players will have access to 240 active skill gems. Now if you've never played the original Path of Exile or you just think it's another Diablo clone, these numbers probably just fried your brain a little bit. The current game skill tree contains 1325 passive skills so you know the bump is actually not that big the gameplay trailers look straight up amazing a world even darker and grittier the bosses look scary i mean i have nothing bad to say against it it just looks like a good game i've played path of exile in cooperative mode the game accommodates such you know game mode perfectly and if you've ever played other hack and slash rpg you will know exactly what to expect and the uh, cooperative mode is up to six players so you know go make more friends path of exile 2 Close beta will be available on 7th of June this year on Windows, Mac and the current generation consoles. And this is it, the top 10 cooperative games that are presumably releasing this year. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, you are helping a ton. Thank you, see you next time, Cal out.